Hey, what's up, guys? Jeremy here. The two main reasons why people use robot to machine or mill part is because of the size of the working envelope you can create with the robot and potential external access, and the price you'll have to pay to get such setup compared to a comparable sized CNC. The thing is, not so many people know how to program a robot as a CNC. And it might even look a bit complicated at first. But with RoboDK and our plugin for Bobcat Cam, you'll be able to do so following a very smooth workflow. In this video, I will show you how to install the plugin and a few settings you might want to know about. Let's get started. Obviously, you first need to install RoboDK and Bobcat Cam on your computer. RoboDK will work with Bobcat Cam V34 and upward. Um, to install the plugin, you can simply reach our documentation, robodk.com slash doc. And then on your right, you will see here we have um, plugins and then the last option here, Bobcat Cam. If you follow here, it will give you installation an installation process, um, fairly easy to follow. So you can simply download the file here, here, open them. I will uh, simply extract them on my computer here. So that's great. If I open that folder, you will have a install that BAT or install that bat and then a RoboDK folder here. If you run this here, uh, you should have no issue whatsoever. You would have to have RoboDK and Bobcat Cam um, closed first and foremost, obviously. Then you can run this here. You might have to right click properties and then you might have an option here to unlock the file. Uh, in this case, I don't have it, but it might be the case for you. So you can double click on that and it will install the files at the right place. If you do that, you can open Bobcat and you should see the tab here showing that the Bobcat can plugin was indeed installed. If you have your, if you're having issues with that, you can simply download the same files or same zip file that I showed you. You go to C and then you go to Bobcat cam and then Bobcat cam V and the version you have. And then under Lua plugin, you can simply copy and paste the, con the content of this uh, folder here. So, and everything should work accordingly. So if you open the Bobcat Cam after that, you should have your plugin and all the options uh, here. So that's great. Now, if we click on settings here within Bobcat Cam, you will see a few options. So if you click here, use Bobcat Cam template in RoboDK, it will simply uh, change the color of the background in RoboDK. Uh, this might be overwritten by another option in RoboDK that prevents uh, that kind of thing. So yes, uh, load part will automatically load your part when you load the program. I personally prefer having that unchecked as I prefer doing stuff one step at a time. So just load the part and then load the program. Um, you will have here invert machine uh, access. So some robots prefer having the Z axis pointing inward, like inside the tool, instead of having it pointing outward. Uh, those are just two different conventions. None is better than the other. Um, here you have which reference frame you want to use. By default, it's going to be a written machining reference. Uh, I like to use here a dedicated name to make sure that I'm loading the part and the, progr and, um, the program inside the right reference frame or right so inside the right coordinate system. You can post either in G-code or APT. I would highly recommend keeping APT here. Uh, if you want, you can post process in G-code from Bobcat to RoboDK. I don't see many uh, pros of doing that. There's not so many cons either, but uh, yeah. Then you can select the, the unit, but the unit should be automatically linked to the unit you have here uh, in your document. And then you have the upgrade, update level. So you can either just load the program and then open a robot machining project. You can load the program, create and uh, open the machining project and then try to update it automatically, update and simulate automatically, or you can load the program, update and update automatically and then generate the program for it automatically. So like in one step. So uh, 
those are interesting, but just if you are working into in a known environment with a known setup, with a known cell, and then you're just kind of regenerating new path for um, a known setup, because otherwise you will generally have to go inside RoboDK and make sure that your tool orientation is fine, that you don't have any collisions and then so on and so forth. So I prefer personally for the first the first few uh, import of a given project, I will always use only load part. Um, so that's the, that's the thing. Another thing that you might have uh, faced if you tried this project after the first video and you selected like that here and simply simply selected update operation and then went back to RoboDK, you might have said like, why were you uh, having like four or three or four different projects while I only have one. And this is kind of problematic because I can't really like wind unwind my join six uh, between those paths. I, I don't have that much control, uh, which I would have if I had those splitted because I could add a transition in between if I need. Uh, this is because you don't have uh, a quick option activated here. So or under tools and then options and then cam, here you have automatically create one machining operation per program, automatically create one machining operation per tool. So it will figure out which, uh, where uh, things are split inside uh, Bobcat and will create one machining project per let's say process or operation. And if you always also change the tool, it will also create one uh, robot machining project per tool, which is a very good idea. And then here you have the naming pattern that you can change if you ever need to do so. Uh, that's cool. Other little uh, thing that you might want to be aware of, if you open a robot machining project, you can select param events. And under the param events, you'll be able to set the speed of the fast approach uh, speed. You can, you'll be able to change your rounding. So this is uh, a setting that you might need to play around a bit to have smooth motion without uh, compromising too much the accuracy of your path. Um, and then you have your change tool ID and spindle speed. So by default, RoboDK will uh, take the ID of the tool you entered inside your machining project uh, program. So the same as if you were to use um, a tool changer in a CNC, each tool will have a number and then it will, the, the CNC uh, or the NC file will refer to that tool to be picked before doing a given um, process. So that's the same thing here. Every time you have a tool change in the uh, APT file, because in the background, like what we're doing is like we're saving an APT file on your computer in your temp folder and then bringing it to RoboDT after. So if in the APT file, there's a request for a tool change, it will be applied here and it will tr be transformed into a set tool uh, function, or you can change the name here, set tool function here, and it will pick the number of uh, the number of the tool that was requested and will apply it as a parameter on uh, between parentheses in your uh, generated program. So yeah, you can stick with set tool or you can enter whatever other name you need to do. And then it's your job as a robot uh, programmer or integrator to create a subroutine inside your robot that knows that if it received like set tool one, it knows where to go and pick tool one in your uh, tool changer. So, and then you have same thing for set RPM. So it will pick the RPM from the APT file and apply it to, and, and apply it as a parameter to a subroutine called set RPM that will appear inside your src.mod.ls.jbi um, file, depending on what robot brand you are using. So if you were to use a, um, a G code, you could also have some run code here. So run codes uh, or M codes, in fact, so M codes are um, used for different, let's say sometimes just starting a spindle. Sometimes uh, they'll have other uh, use cases. So you could create within your controller a subprogram called M run code or whatever string you enter here. And the M code will be passed um, here in where the percentage one is, percent one is. And then you could create kind of a series of if and else uh, inside your robot controller to see, okay, if I got M run code 31, what should I do with that? 
Uh, but yeah, this information will be passed down from the APT file to RoboDK to your final program for you to, uh, to, to catch and do whatever needs to be done with that run code, if there's anything to be done with that run code. Uh, if, you don't want to, if you don't want to have any run code, you can just like delete this here. If you don't want to have, have any spindle speed or change tool, you can just delete those here. So this is if you were doing 3D printing. Uh, so if you want to kind of mute down that feature, you can just delete um, everything from here. Or you can say, okay, every time I see a spindle RPM, I, my spindle is predefined inside my um, robot controller, let's say. And it will always just go at one speed because I'm just cutting foam, let's say, and it's always the same RPM. So I could here instead, every time I see uh, spindle, uh, let's say a, a, a spindle RPM, I can just say start spindle, which would trigger a sub program inside the controller that simply uh, start the spindle spinning, let's say. If it's not spinning and then if you if it was spinning, it stopped the spindle, depending on your needs. So that could be something that you want to add and that would be uh, super interesting. Another thing I want to show you real quick is that if you go under tools and then options and then cam, most of the settings we changed inside the robot machining project can, uh, there's like kind of default parameters when you open the robot machining project the first time you can always kind of change those default parameters so that if you know that it will always be like this, like that, because you have like different parts coming in, but they are all kind of the same shape or kind of in the same setup, you can just change your default parameters so you won't have to change that at as many options inside your machining project once you import the path from, um, from Bobcat Cam. Okay, that's pretty much everything for this video. I hope it was helpful. Um, it pretty much concludes what I had to say regarding our new integration with Bobcat Cam. So we did the first video where we had a simple debugging part, showed you how to import that, set up your orientation, generate the program. And then we went for something a bit more complicated with a turntable to create a um, statue uh, replica. And now we just learned how to create or to how to install the plugin and set up a few little things, uh, useful things. So I hope it was helpful and in any case, have a great day guys.